My name is Anthony Allen, welcome here to my YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to save space on your Mac while using Final Cut Pro 10 aka Final Cut Pro X and it's coming up next, that rhymes. <laughs> Yo, let's join forces, hit the subscribe button. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to save space within Final Cut Pro 10, aka Final Cut Pro X, FCPX. So in order to do that, the first thing that we need to do is import some media. And we're actually going to do this through the import window. So in order to find the import window, the first thing you need to do is you need to move up to the top of the screen you will see the Final Cut Pro tabs open up you then go into file and then we move down to import and in our case we're importing media so if you click on media here we go so this is where it starts to get interesting the first thing I want you to do is I want you to find the location of the place of where your files are your media files are that you want to import in my case it's in an external Toshiba hard drive and mine's quite easy to find I've now found the files that I want to import. Now the important thing here is how we are going to import in order to save space with our Final Cut Pro 10. I want you to pay attention to the Create Optimize and Create Proxy Media. Now I have these unchecked but I'm actually going to give you an explanation as to what these are. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because Proxy Media and Optimize Media files will be separate files that are created and taking up space within your project file location. So if your project file location is on your desktop, that project file will begin to bloat and get bigger with every change that you make within Final Cut Pro 10. Let's give you a brief explanation as to what proxy media and optimized media are and what they do for you so that you can make a decision as to if you were going to actually check this and check this when creating your project. So if you would like an explanation as to what proxy media and optimized media are you can always visit support.apple.com and then search the table of context of Final Cut Pro 10 and you can find an in detail description on optimized media and proxy media which you can see on screen right now. Optimized media is a media file that is created to help you with your performance within Final Cut Pro 10. It helps you to render things faster while you're editing. So that explains optimized media in a brief explanation. It's a media file that is creating a copy of what you were doing so that you can actually edit faster. It renders things faster and Final Cut Pro 10 will work faster. Now let's give a brief explanation on proxy media files. Proxy media files in a nutshell are basically the same sort of thing as optimized media files in the respect that it creates a separate file of your changes within Final Cut Pro 10 so you can see what's going on in the preview screen but it takes up less room than optimized media. So the way you actually decide how you're going to save space by checking optimized media or proxy media is basically by judging the size of your project. How long is your project going to take you? Is it a large project? Do you have a lot of media that you will be importing? Or is it just a few files that are very small in size? If it's just a few files that are very small in size, I wouldn't check optimize or proxy media because it would be very, very quick to complete. And creating optimize and proxy media for a small editing job is just going to bloat your project and create extra files that are not necessary when you're completing that edit. So we're going to be creating just a simple edit to a video file that is approximately just over three gigabytes and that is going to be a Fortnite video that I created it's actually me using the purple remedy skin the alternative skin that you have to unlock in Fortnite we're going to import this now I'm going to select it first you can see it previewing within our import window where you can actually uh, scan the video to see if everything's okay and what we're going to do is we're going to not select uh, optimized media and we're not going to select proxy media either we're just going to import the selected 
So we've now imported our file into Final Cut Pro 10, but at this point, we wanna make sure that we are still saving space, especially when we're restricted for space. So at this point, what you can do is you can actually look into project files that you have open. So the project that I'm actually working on at the moment for this tutorial is this one here, which says subscribe Anthony Allen edits. This is our project file that we're actually working on. But you can see that there are others, other projects, for example, edits pro here. There is pro six here where I'm talking about a pro six plugin from Pixelform Studios. And there is one that I call Instaflex, which is basically where I crop my video into an Instagram square video so that you guys can keep in, you know, keep up to date with what I'm doing here on my YouTube channel. Now I'm not currently using these projects, but they're still taking up space. I'm gonna show you how you can delete the render files for those videos and those projects so that you can save even more space. So any projects that you're not currently working on, you can delete the render files because if there's an issue, you can just render them again. There is nothing wrong with deleting render files. It's not gonna really harm your project at all. It's not gonna make any issues because the project with the media within the project is going to stay in the same place. So the way that you do this and the way that you delete the, the render files for those projects is first, you find the project file within your browser. Once you've done that, you will see these gray and black lines above the project file. That is basically which the whole entire edit is encased in. If I click that, so for example, edits pro here, it then opens this up. In order to get back to my original project, what you would just do, well, from the timeline, in order to get back there from the timeline, you would just click this back button here and you move it on to another project. So there's more than one project now in a timeline and I can switch between the two. Now you can see that some of the files are rendered here because there's no dotted line above some of the media sources. And I knew from beforehand that I actually did render them. In some cases, some files don't need rendering for some reason in Final Cut Pro 10. And the way you can see that is when you import it, there'll be no dotted line. Uh, most likely it's because no changes have been made to the media. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the project file is highlighted. I've just went to check that the project still has media contained within it. I'm gonna to go up to the files and I'm going to go down to delete generated project files. When you click this, you can actually decide whether you're going to delete render files, optimized media and proxy media for this selected project. You will see a yellow box around your selected project. This will tell you that you're actually selecting this one and that's the one you're making a change to. So I'm going to delete render files, optimized media, and proxy media. This will greatly free up a lot of space on your Mac machine so that you have more space to do with what you please. If it's taking up too much space, this is the way you can take some of those files away that are not necessary at the moment. So then you click OK. But that has done the job. If there was any uh, proxy media or render files created for that project, they have now gone. You can then actually click onto this one and you can do the same if you've got more than one then go down to deleted generated event files let me just move the uh, background out of the way and here you can actually see that there are render files for this one the reason why is because we have a separate option so we have an option to delete the unused only meaning there are render files that your project is not using uh, in order to export your video your finished video or to showcase the video to you within the software in this case we want to delete all render files because we are not using the render files here in this project so let's do that so now this is deleted all render files within the pro 6 project which is a separate project to what we're working on but the most important thing that you need to do is if you're if you haven't made any changes to your preferences within Final Cut Pro 10, then this will automatically begin to render those changes once again, because you're now inside of the project. As soon as you're inside of your project and you haven't done any changes to the preferences, which I will be showing you in a minute, then you will automatically in 0.3 seconds be rendering the changes that have been made previously in that project. So in order to stop the software from rendering files that you do not want rendered yet, uh, and you want that control in your hands so that you can control how much space is being taken up by projects that are currently not active and you, you still have within your browser. 
what you would do is you would go up to the tabs, you would click on Final Cut, then you go into Preferences, and then you want to go into Playback. You can then see that there is a render, a background render, and you can see how long it takes to render the changes that you make within your timeline. By default, this is set to 0.3 seconds, and this will be checked, like so. What you want to do is you want to click this button here and uncheck the background render. This will save you space as when you've deleted those render files for those projects that you're not currently using but are still in your browser, they will now stop rendering those changes. But this does leave the rendering in your hands. So I'm gonna walk you through what you need to do with your rendering in order to make sure that your file and your projects still run smoothly together within Final Cut Pro 10. So at this point, what you would do is you would make sure that any of the media within your timeline before you export uh, doesn't have this dotted line above it. And the way you actually render this file, uh, as the dotted line indicates that your file is not rendered and your video is not rendered before exporting, is you would select it, up to file, across to modify, and then you would say render selection. Or if you want everything in your timeline rendered because you're about to export and you want that high quality, then you would actually select render all. Another way you can actually save space within Final Cut Pro 10 is if you have multiple projects within your library and there's say for example one that you're not currently using or do not need to use again, uh, for example edits pro here I don't need to use, you can select it, press control, right click and then you can move this to the trash. What I do after that point is I actually restart my entire machine as that has gone to a separate trash which is not the same as your bin within your your Mac. So I like to restart so that the cache and cookies and everything can be emptied so I know that that uh, project file is not taking up any more space. And the last thing that you can do in order to save a heck of a lot of space within your Final Cut Pro 10 is deleting projects that you are not currently using. So there are two ways you can do this. You can actually find the location of the project file. Let me give you an example of what a project file from Final Cut Pro 10 looks like. So if we move this across, you can see untitled here in my external hard drive. This is our untitled here. That's the entire library of projects. If I were to drag this to the bin, then it will delete this entire library of projects. But for our case here, I'm actually going to drag the explaining Fortnite project file here. Before I do this, I'm going to show you the size of the file. So if we click on to get info, you can see that this one file is 23 gigabytes. That is taking up a heck of a lot of space and that is without proxy and optimized media. Once this is deleted, this will take up all that space, all the space will be back to you, sorry. Uh, so you'll have 23 gigabytes free. This is the reason why I use an external hard drive, by the way. Um, and all this, all this takes is just dragging that project file once you've found it into the bin. And then when you're done, you want to empty your bin. And that will free up the space within your hard drive or external hard drive if you're using one. So I think that covers everything for now. That is how you can save a heck of a lot of space when you're using Final Cut Pro 10, AKA Final Cut Pro X. Hopefully this video has helped you. This has just been a few of my tips uh, that should dramatically help you save space within Final Cut Pro 10 while you're editing. If this has helped you in any way, shape or form, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button for more. We have more Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials and helpful videos that should help you as well. I'd like to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.